All right, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. <clears throat> Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety, variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. The show is usually, <coughs> I'll say, <coughs> broadcast live on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are this morning and then post it to the archives on our website. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you will find those archives. Um, I say usually because today we are actually doing this live on Monday, <laughs> <laughs> December 23rd. Um, this was um, normally our show would be on Wednesdays, as I said, but this year, Wednesday happens to fall on the Christmas Day holiday. Uh, the Nebraska Library Commission, for those of you that might not be aware, is the state agency for libraries in Nebraska. So the state of Nebraska is closed on Wednesday, of course, for the holiday. So we couldn't broadcast then. And then we were getting, then so we had bumped it back to Tuesday. No problem. And then last week we were told we were getting an additional holiday. Uh, as state workers, we are given the same holidays as <laughs> federal workers. Um, and it was announced that the federal workers would have also Tuesday off as a holiday. So the show got bumped back to Monday. So we're here on a Monday this morning. Everyone's very confused, but we're here. Yeah. <laughs> we're here uh, to do the show, no problem. Uh, for those of you watching this on recording, none of this matters because you're watching it whenever it works for you. It's true. Yeah. Um, we do a mixture of things here on Encompass Lives, uh, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products. Uh, we bring in librarians from across the state and across the country to show off cool things they're doing. Um, we do presentations here from Nebraska Library Commission staff as well for things that we are doing locally, um, services and products we're providing, or just things that we want to share. Uh, and that's what we have today is actually, this is um, our monthly show, our new mo special monthly episodes that we do now of Pretty Sweet Tech with Amanda Sweet, our technology innovation librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. So once a month, usually the last Wednesday of the month, although this month it got switched around because of holidays and things, things happen, um, but at least once a month, coming in to definitely talk about something techie related. So if you are a tech type person looking for the pretty sweet techs coming up, um, that would be your thing to do, definitely. It's not only those days, we do other ones, that other shows that could potentially be that, but she'll always be coming on once a month to um, talk about these kind of things. Uh, so today's show is being recorded. Uh, if you do have any questions, comments, thoughts throughout the show, type into the question section of the GoToWebinar interface. I'm monitoring that here on my laptop and we can answer any questions, comments you have. And today we're going to, as the title of the session says, watch me build a virtual world using A-Frame. I have no idea what that means. I know virtual worlds. Yeah, that yeah. I do know. I play in them in games and in um, and things like I've done Second Life and whatnot. Yeah. But as far as a frame, I know as it looks like on that picture there, it's a house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm just gonna hand over to you and Matt to explain to us what the heck we're doing today. What's this gonna cool. be? I think it's gonna be fun. It's shiny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's very pink. That's is it true. pink? It's like Looks a pinkish pink reddish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of hard to tell. We'll go magenta. Sure. Yeah. I could go with that. Yeah. All right. So A-frame, what's up with that? So A-frame, if you've ever used um, like a virtual reality headset, this is one way that you can build mm -hmm. that world. I was just at, uh, we were just doing that. Well, I didn't. Yesterday we had a, a gaming afternoon and night evening at a friend's house and they had that. It's yeah. pretty slick, yeah. And I've used them before too at, uh, at events, uh, uh, library events actually, because um, we're. Yeah. This is the kind of thing that some um, libraries are promoting, sharing, getting some of this equipment yeah. for people to you come in and use to either just to learn things. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know about creating their own stuff if that's. Yeah. Happening yet? <laughs> oh, but it will. It will, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so basically. 
you've probably already heard a bit about virtual reality before, but just in case you haven't, it's the one where you can put on the headset and it blocks out the rest of the world, and then you are fully immersed into your own virtual world. And this A-frame is, it's kind of cool because you don't actually have to have a headset to be able to experience a 360 world. Hmm. You can also embed it just on the web. So cool. this is all HTML based. So you can actually, they make it really easy to just insert it into a regular web page and it hmm. shows up just as like a little viewer and then you can take your mouse and click and move around. So I'm gonna and interact with whatever has been created. Oh, did we ever change the battery in this mouse? Uh, I don't know. It's just a little, a little, a little jumpy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fails to see better. You can look on the screen here too. Oops. So I clicked on get started here. And to, I'm going to go to this showcase here to give you an idea of what other people have made using this. So I'm going to click open Soundboxing WebVR. Hmm. And you can see you can move and navigate around. And you can go yeah. full 360 here. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is they did a whole bunch of um, surveys of people that you that interact with these environments online. And they found out most people only navigate about 180 degrees. But it goes all the way. Yeah. <laughs> so, and that's when you see a lot of these developers, they start to get lazy because they know. Nobody's going to look behind yeah. them. <laughs> so a lot of the content is in that first 180 degrees and it's easier to render that way and it doesn't slow down your computer as much. Sure. So, why develop a bunch of content for stuff that only half the population is going to spin around and look at? <laughs> <laughs> and these are basically just little labels that pop up. And mm. they make it super easy to put these into A-frame because it's just one line of code and then some text. And then you line it up together. So now I'm going to pop out of this showcase. And I'm going to go into... Oh, this is a fun one too. I'm just gonna click Super on this for crap. fun. Thanks with your hands, huh? And this is just like an additional tool that was created, and just kind of a fun one to look at. So I'm gonna go into the A-frame main page, and to get started with actually building this stuff. You want to go to the get started button. So now on this left hand side, when you want to actually take a quick sift through the introduction about how all this stuff works. Mm -hmm. So this explains that it is HTML based. And if you've used, if you've built websites and stuff before, the mm -hmm. HTML will probably look pretty familiar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The head looks familiar and the body tags look familiar. Yep. And then this little script source, this is pulling all the information that the computer needs to know to get A-Frame up and running. So to import, to insert this into your main page, it's mainly all you need. You pop that into your header mm -hmm. and you're golden. And now this is where it gets different, the scene section. All of the action will happen in a scene. Oh, makes sense. Yeah, like yeah. A, like a movie or a TV show. Okay. And the scene will always wind up in your body tags, just like your p tags, header tags, and everything mm -hmm. like that in a regular web page. Main content of whatever your page is about. Yeah. And then, so this is kind of just to get stuff to show up on your screen. And so this would actually look like. I'm going to go into glitch here. So there's a whole bunch of different coding environments that you could use for this because it is just HTML. Mm -hmm. But the one that they recommend is something called glitch because it is really user friendly. 
And it's also, they make it really easy to share projects with multiple different people. Ah. And so we're going to go into the show here. And this is what it actually looks like on the screen. So you see they hmm. built just this little thing. Some basic shapes. See, but you can navigate the whole way around. It's so just right blank. now we have a blank <laughs> slate. <laughs> yeah. So what we're gonna do right now is start building little platform images so that you have another one of these located over here and then over here. But this next one is going to be just a hop up here. So it's gonna be almost like a Super Mario Brothers kind of thing. You know how he has to how Mario mm -hmm. has to run along and then he jumps Jump across up. Yep. Up on mm -hmm. little platforms. So that's sort of the environment that we're gonna go for here. So we're gonna get the circle on one platform, then the cylinder on the next one, and the box on the next one. And we're going to change the colors all of, of all of these so that they mesh in together with our background. And we're about to go we're about mm -hmm. to give it kind of a shiny background. <laughs> cool. <laughs> all right, so now we're going to go into This is a shared, this is what we're going to be going for here. Wow. So this is going to be our new background here. So the background, this particular, this background is a real It's a real, yeah. of a real place, yeah. okay. So someone actually took a 360 video mm -hmm. of, this is actually in some city, I can't remember the name of in New Jersey, and Here's our scene. Here's this right here. Yeah, what we're inserting into it. Yeah. So now we're going to go up into our code section and I'll show you how I did this. So I'm going to go to view source. And then I'm going to click this remix to edit button in the upper right hand corner. And if you don't click this remix to edit button, none of your changes are going to show up and nothing is actually going to take effect. Mm. So, got it. And now to get to our actual source, we're gonna click on this index page. And the index page is kind of like that main home page, just like you would for a regular website. So now this is what our actual code looks like. So remember we had the box, the mm -hmm. sphere, the cylinder, and we have that little, that wide plain section there the floor, I don't know, the ground. <laughs> yeah. So this is how all that stuff shows up. So these are different entities that would show up in there. And A-Frame already pre-formatted a whole bunch of different common shapes for us. And then you they- can just use as you and modify for whatever you're yeah. doing. Which is kind of handy. Yeah. So if you go down here into A-Frame's kind of documentation thing, you have, and then we'll scroll all the way down here to our primitives. And this is what uh, there we go. A all the, already as done all the basic shapes that you can just use. Yeah. Curved images, ring, sky. Yeah. They even have a little torus, that little loop thing, which is handy. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And so they just, they made this about as user friendly as you can possibly so get. So look for the kind of thing you want to make and yeah. use it from there. And you can also even, so I'm going to grab a cone here. And so you can type this out manually or you can just copy and paste it. And the copy and paste route is what I'm going to go with now because Typos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so much easier. Yeah, definitely. So I'm just going to go back into our index. I have here. a tendency to like forget one of the little yeah carrot things, and it just breaks. And I was like, oh, that's not right at all. <laughs> <laughs> so now what I want is to get this cone. So we're going to go into our goal is to get the cone on top of the cylinder, and we're going to make like a little mini house thing. Ah, okay, makes sense. So I'm gonna go into show, but I'm going to show it next to the code here. Uh -huh. 
And then we're going to just hide this here so we have a little extra More space. space on your, depending on the size of your monitor, this could be your, like the width. It could be a lot easier yeah. to see everything. Yeah. <laughs> we're working with a pretty standard size here, yeah. So now we can kind of see, and I'm going to take out this, the text here. Because we don't really need it. Hello world, yeah. Yeah. That was actually something that I added later. Mm -hmm. So this, this is a show that you can do. Yeah. Pretty much. So we'll pop out that. So now our hello world automatically disappears. Nice. And now we're going to go into our cylinder and we have a cone in here, but it's not showing up. Mm. And it's because of this. You see this position thing here? Yes. This shows where in the grid it's going to show up on our X, Y, and Z axes. Mm -hmm. So that's what we want to add here because right now our cone is just floating in some random place and we don't even know where it is. We, we might be able to find where it is and it might even have popped in like. Oh, is that yeah. it right below us? Yeah, that's <laughs> so it. We're standing in front of it. All right. <laughs> So now we're going to go back into where our regular shapes are, and we're going to change the location of this cone. And we're going to match it to the location of our cylinder so that it matches up. So I'm going to go into our cylinder, and I'm just going to copy and paste that position. And now, there is gonna... no position thing on the cone yeah. when you first put it in. It just yeah. default puts it like on top of you I, or where you are, I guess. Basically, huh? yeah. Until you tell it where to go. And that's kind of like their default basic, mm -hmm. and then you're just supposed to customize it. Sure. So now you see we have a giant, massive cone. It's got a skirt. And it just <laughs> ate our cylinder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Everything can be modified, though. It's true. Yeah. So now we can make changes to this positioning and we can find out how that's going to impact it. So we do, do this one, we'll change it to a 1.2. So now we know that that first one shifts it over to the side. Mm -hmm. So we don't want that. And then we'll do the 0.75, we'll turn that into a one. Nope, it totally buried it. And, but is it doing what we want here? I just want to see if it moved mm -hmm. it up at all. And it looks mm -hmm. like it actually did somewhat. Yeah, you don't see the yellow anymore. So now we're going to go to three. So there now we is. have no, floating it's... cone. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of uh, playing around yeah. with it to just figure out which fits best. Yeah. And that's why it'll help to jot down the original size. Oh, so you know where you started from? Yeah. Yeah. See, that looks better. Yeah. It almost looks like a mushroom. Mm hmm. We should just make okay. a mushroom. I'm actually <laughs> going to keep this and we're going to turn it into a mushroom. Yes. <laughs> so we're going to make this red. So that's the thing, too. I was wondering about the colors. Oh, yeah. Because I noticed when this, when we brought in the cone, it said color equals tomato. But some of the other ones use the, um, the hex, hex yeah. code for a color. So you, it's whichever way yeah. you can actually type in it. Because that's one of the things I have annoyance with with doing websites and stuff yeah. is what is the damn code for this one and what yeah. you know I bring up the here's the color wheel I'll just click on things so it looks like the right one but yeah it's hard to know and then it pops in the right code but you can actually just type in words of what color you think you want it to be yeah and so this shade of red it might not be exactly what you're going for right and then you would still have to do some modifying potentially if you wanted a particular but so we have our so our cylinder is this color so let's grab right. this color copy so now let's say that we want a color that really meshes with that one so this is a color scheme generator and it's coolers.co mm. so we'll cool. start the generator it's free 
and I heart this website. Like I use it all the time. <laughs> and I want to watch no, a tutorial. I don't really want to watch a tutorial. So now here are those hex colors that are down here. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to just edit it. And I've just copy and pasted in, and now we have that yellow. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to hit this lock button that's going to lock this color into place. Hit the space bar key. And now it generates colors that are within the color palette that matches the lock. So it seems it would be compatible and not clashing yeah. with that color. Oh, nice. And then we can just grab whatever color. So if color. you're not a graphic designer who knows these kind of things from yeah. like extensive training and education, because I would be like, well, I like these colors, but I don't know if they look good together. Right? Yeah. This will. Don't tell our graphic designers that we can do this. Right, <laughs> that yeah. We don't need them anymore. Like, but, but, yeah. but this will tell you the kind of things that might match. That's kind of cool. And I think this one looks pretty decent. So let's just try this one. Because I know what I like, but I don't know if it works sometimes. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, like, if you if you change the background color that's behind both of these, that then might it start changes clashing. the look of mm -hmm. it. And, mm -hmm. But then, so then you can grab your yellow and then lock in your background color, mm -hmm. and then it'll mesh up with everything. Things that match with both of those. Yeah. yeah. So now if we lock in this one, we can change our circle shape or... Ooh, another thing's really purple. Yeah. Wow. Oh, it's kind of a. Mm -hmm. So you just keep heating the space bar, and it'll change and give you different yeah. colors, so yeah. you can see different potential combinations. Okay. And like the really light shades are great for text colors on a dark background. And sure. So I think I already copy and pasted this, but I'll do it again. So I'm going to copy this, then we'll go back into our main code. And now I want to change the color of our cone. And instead of just being the generic red, we'll grab that hex color. And it's showing it. So you notice how I put in the color, but it's not appearing right now. No. The reason is we need that hash. Oh, right. Yeah. So now with the hash, it knows mm -hmm. it's looking for mm -hmm. a color, and it pops in there. Nice. Okay. So now we want to actually move this into a different area. So now we're going to grab our cylinder and grab our cone. And these are going to be staying on this one platform. So cylinder, cone, plane, those are all going to stay. Mm -hmm. And we're going to grab the box. The blue box there, yep. So we're just going to cut that, and we're still in the same scene. We're just going to go into a different area here. So now I'm going to paste that, and we want to shift its location. So now we're going to move this over. So remember, we wanted it to be up higher and over. Okay. So now let's try, let's find out which way this is going to be moving. So now this one is going to be right. shifting right. And we want it way right. So we're going to do six. And let's see where our box landed. Oh, there it is out there. <laughs> so now let's shift it on over this way. And... Let's see which way this will go. It always recenters you to the original yeah. location. There we go. So now we're going to pop it up. Two. Honestly, that's not my favorite feature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now maybe we want it to be a little closer. Let's try. There. So now we want a little platform under here. So it's not just floating in the sky. Pretty much. So now we're going to grab our plane here. And we can just duplicate that. Yeah. Not Yes, yeah, so we're not going to cut. We're going to just copy and move it. So now we're going to copy it, and this is going to show up as an, another plane that's right over the one we already have. 
and then we're going to change our positioning so that it shows up where we want it to be because it's easier to do this than to retype out the whole thing from scratch. All right, so now we're going to change our position for two, zero. So now we should be a little closer to where our box is. Oh, it's because I did four, four, zero, not Oops. four, two, zero. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> All right, so now we're still not there. So let's find out where it landed. There's our original one. Did it go on the ground? Okay, so now we want to find out what went wrong here because this is in the same exact position as our box over here. So it should either be splicing it in half in the middle here, but it should be in this general region. So let's find out if I grab the end tag here. Yeah, looks like it, I clean. And then I grab the full plane here. And, well, the rotation is different. Does that matter? See, and that shouldn't make a huge difference on this one because it should still be in mm. that same area, but just in a weird... Mm. We can try it. Zero. Yeah, I didn't have... <laughs> and with and height, our color is the contrasting, so it should be okay. It's within our scene, so that should be okay. Let's try it in a different... I'm going to try it in the original position, but I'm going to move it up a little. Mm, so they're like... Yeah. yeah. Okay. So here is, and I just rotated it, so I'm uh, going to rotate it back. Right, so there it is now, this way, yeah. So it is there. Yeah, you can see it over there, okay. Hmm. But now we want to find out why this isn't shifting where we want it to go. So let's do it one step at a time. Yeah. So let's see if it moved. Yep, there it is. And then let's do two. And let's see if it moved. Oops. <laughs> Okay, so that and middle it, one is what that did it. is what's making it disappear. Hmm. So this must be shooting it completely off the plane here. So let's do 0.5. Oh, hmm. point. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think I see it back there. Okay. So we're getting closer. Hmm. One. Uh, 
Oh, as you get it closer over there, it looks like it's flattening out. I wonder if we're looking at it edge on and it's there, but we can't see it. And it might, yeah, I think you might be Because right. here you can see it's like this, and as you keep going farther that way, it goes more and more. See, there it is just there. Yeah. I think it was there. You just yeah. couldn't see it. Yeah. <sighs> see? Don't know everything. Yeah. <laughs> Figure these things out. Mm -hmm. So let's do our original two again. <clears throat> So I changed the angle and it still doesn't, because hmm. we should be able to change the angle and see it. And see it from different, on, yeah, yeah. If hmm. we're dead on. Let's try. Is this something you tried to do before and it did it or is this just it something? It did do it, oh, yeah. Okay. Hmm. And when I did it the first time, it actually bisected it right in the middle. <laughs> and then I just shimmied it down a little bit. Uh -huh. And now, not so much. So let's try it at so, zero and see if we can flip it. And so this isn't be... software that you install. This is just something you do on a website, right? You don't have to have something you special can. installed for it. No, you can just do this on okay. a website. Does it matter which browser you're using? Potentially, I usually go through Mozilla or Chrome, hmm. okay. and this was actually designed originally by Mozilla, so I okay. just go through Mozilla. But I've used it on Chrome, and it's worked. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Um, I don't. I never use IE for anything. No. Only I, things that we're required to for the much, stage. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. But. So I'm not going to worry about this too much right now because we have other ground to cover. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Something to play around with and see how you can do this. Yeah. So I'm just going to. But it's interesting to see how things can move around, how you can change things. Um, and it's not really something you can break, which I know a lot of people would be concerned yeah. about. You know, what if yeah. I destroy my world? What if something? Just do it, put it back, undo yeah. something, delete something, and try try a different way. And you can always, if it goes way haywire, you can just delete this whole line and then copy and paste again. Start over again, yeah. yeah. It's all just code, yeah. Pretty much. And, oh, this is going to annoy me. Oh, well. Okay, so we have kind of the general idea of how to add new things into this world. So how did I get that sky in there? So the background? This, yeah. So this guy, mm. it's actually just a JPEG, mm. which is sort of surprising. Huh. So we go back into our developer code here, and now I'm going to go down to this A sky, and it's just another primitive another background color or 360 image to a scene. So aqua rectangular is kind of the result of when you take that 360 footage. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to open up this, the website where that image came from, and it's going to be a little trippy. Mm -hmm. So this is something that I see it says that it uses a background color, or so you would have to already have taken a 360 yep. picture some, or, yep. or have, have one that you can access yeah. to use in this. Yeah. I do like to how it explained after you've got the top, and this kind of gave me a good visual that um, a sky primitive as a background color. A sky is a large sphere with a color or texture yeah. map. So it's kind of think of yourself sitting in inside of a snow globe Basically. or something. Yeah. So that kind of, you know, gets it in my head if that's what I'm thinking about is what would be around me is, yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah. Um, so another way that you can make this virtual world is by using a program called Unity. Okay. And Unity is like the next level up of building this kind of virtual yeah. reality stuff. And in that one, you pull in that image, but then when you first pull it in and you test it out in like that virtual reality headset, all you see is darkness. Hmm. Because there's another step in that program where you have to invert it. Ah, okay. Which is also super trippy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can see that it would be. So they made a whole bunch of these available online, and it's actually on a Flickr. Uh -huh. Cool. So we're looking for the aqua rectangular images, and not all of these are actually available to download. Hmm. Some of them are just cool. 
So the one that I used here, I grabbed it last week. That's not it. New ones might have been uploaded. Yeah, yeah. well, and I bet they were. Next page. Oh, if you go up to the top, you should be. View all oh, photos. Oh, this is overview. Yeah. Okay. Wow. And you see how these are really trippy. Mm -hmm. Until you bring them into where you can actually yeah. see. Yeah. Because the way that a 360 camera works is that it takes a whole bunch of separate mini images, mm -hmm. then the software stitches them together. So on a flat. Um, it doesn't look right. Yeah. 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 And here's the one I grabbed. So here is our holiday backdrop. And you can see the whole 360. Cool. Then I just downloaded this. I grabbed the large version of it. And we're going to save it. Okay, so then to get it to work in Glitch, it's a little different than if you were to get it to work in a real website. Mm -hmm. Because the code that I have right here is like the cheaters developers way of doing it. <laughs> it's not the actual technical way you're supposed to do it. Okay. It was just, it, it was quick. Yeah. yeah, it was quick and it was, it worked for just a developer's thing. Mm -hmm. For demo, yeah. yeah. So the way I did that was to go into our code here. So we're going to go open up this little file menu thing. And we want to load this into our assets. So here I already loaded it. And basically all I did was go to upload an asset. I found the file and hit upload. So to get that link, we go into, we click it open. And then I copied. So whenever you load something into Glitch, Glitch stores it locally on their server. And then they will build a URL that goes directly to that image as long as you're using that, that project. So I copied that link. And then I went into my code. And I just pasted it in here. So you can see that our full code here says a sky, which is our primitive name. SRC is the source where you want, where it's stored. Mm -hmm. And there's that link where it came from. And then we close our tag. And that's it. Um, if you want to know the real way you're supposed to do <laughs> it. Um, so the real way is within this scene, you're supposed to add assets. So assets. Okay are any images, OBJ files. OBJs are like 3D models mm -hmm. that you can that. load. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to go into our asset manager up here. And asset management system. So these are the different assets you can have. And you can also pull in a JPEG or a PNG that is just like float in there. Mm -hmm. So sometimes if you want a label over something or if you want just kind of like an arrow or a descriptor, you can just grab an image of it and it'll pop in there. It'll be 2D, cool. but that's sometimes all you need. Sometimes that's you want that in the in the virtual yeah. world to just label things, yeah. And you can also embed videos in here, which is kind of cool. Cool. But you should actually, so the way I cheated and did it, was to send it over to a link that's through a third party website. Mm. When you're developing a, your actual site, you should download it and store it locally so that you have control over what's happening with that. Because if the servers and glitch went down for whatever reason, or oh. if you're, you are no longer have the access to the project, mm -hmm. or if glitch <clears throat> decides to not glitch anymore, then you don't have to worry about backing up all of your stuff. Yeah, <clears throat> you wouldn't have it anymore. Yeah. No. And so this is the way it would look. You would have your assets up top. 
and then you would have your full scene, all of your primitives down here. And then they would be separated out so that the, then you would, in the code, you would link together what that object is supposed to be looking for in the assets. So the example would be this little entity down here. This is kind of the baseline of a primitive. Mm -hmm. But we're telling, we're creating this entity on our own instead of using one of the pre-made ones like the box or the plane or something <coughs> like that. Right, you're doing one from scratch for yourself, yeah. And I'll highlight this whole thing so it's easier to read on here. So we are telling this to pull from the Kentucky Derby. This is the ID here. So then we're matching the Kentucky Derby ID up here. So this entity mm -hmm. is going to display a video. Yep, and before. Yep. And then down here we've got. I'm gonna guess this is probably a horse. <laughs> <laughs> But then we've got the horse up here, and this is our, so OBJ is like a, it's the file format for a 3D model. Mm -hmm. So if you want to grab a 3D model, you have Tinkercad. So Tinkercad mm -hmm. is what they use for like 3D printing, 3D design. These are all these pre-made models that mm -hmm people put together just for other people to tinker with. Mm -hmm. And I would still look at the different copyright laws on this. Most of them are under this. Look for what they've got as their, yeah. yeah, what they allow you to do with it, yeah. So this one's a share alike, but it is non-commercial, so don't sell it. <laughs> don't but, use it to sell anything, yeah. But if you're just learning how to use this stuff in the library and you're, it's never going to go anywhere, like mm -hmm. go to any, it's not going to be commercial then cool go to town but so we just download this save file santa claus and we go back into our here so we're gonna so we're gonna pop santa claus into our scene because why not cool we'll yeah. go with they'll go with that yeah, yeah. <laughs> So now we need our A asset section so that we can pop this into our code. And now Glitch will automatically add in the end tag for you, which is also kind of handy because I also always forget to do that. <laughs> I downloaded a new editor called um, Sublime just because it does that and it highlights the matching tags. So that you know you've got them both, yeah. So I can click on this one and it auto highlights it just like this glitch does. So now we've got our assets and now we're going to be grabbing these two here. Copy. And I'm just gonna paste this in here. And now we're going to customize it so that it's not a horse. It's going to be Santa. And Santa. So now I'm going to go into my downloads folder and I'll see what landed in here. Because some of them will only give you an OBJ but you actually do want an OBJ and that MTL. MTL is yeah. the other one, yeah. Material. But this, when you pull it with this STL file, is not what we want. We want mm -hmm. one that has an OBJ and that MTL. But I haven't tried it with an STL yet, so let's mm. buy, let's try it. <laughs> it's worth a shot. So I give the disclaimer that this might not work, <laughs> but we're gonna do it anyway. So I'm gonna this grab is... this entity because we need to link these together. Oh, I grabbed the wrong one. 
entity. There. Copy. And we'll pop this down. I'll just put it over by the original section. So now this mix-in we don't need. Um, this mix-in, all it does is change the scale of the object. Mm -hmm. And we don't you really see need it to says do that. giant there. Yeah. That sounds like <laughs> <laughs> not be a good idea. <laughs> yeah. So now I labeled our OBJ. The ID is Santa dash OBJ. So that's what we want here. Santa. And I'll do this anyway, just because we might still need it later. But right now, this is still isn't pointing to anything because this would actually be a file that's stored locally on here. On our own computer, yeah. So we need to pull Santa into our assets, grab that link, and put the link in here. So I'm going to open up this file manager here. We'll go to Assets, and we're going to Upload an Asset. Oh, I forgot I already put these in here. Well, I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. So if this doesn't work, we'll just use the ones I put in there before. <laughs> Santa. There it is, Santa. And I'm going to grab this one. So now I'm going to click open Santa. We're going to grab our link. Click out of that. Go back into our index file. We're going to go back into Santa for the OBJ. And then I'm going to grab that link and pop it in. And now this, it's still searching for this, but this doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So we're going to cut this. And then it's no longer pointing to anything, so we're just going to go down here and get rid of the material for Santa because the file doesn't exist. And vote. So now Santa probably isn't going to pop up anywhere good because <laughs> we didn't tell it where to go. It could be he could be flying anywhere, right? Then. So let's put it over by the cylinder. And we'll see if Santa shows up here. And I positioned it right where the cone is, so Santa might also mm. be inside the Hiding cone. Hiding in there, yeah. So let's move. Negative two. And is it behind here is the question. Now you're also doing this with that different <coughs> that different one too. You said the STL one it with that and it might too. BY yeah. yeah. And because normally I use an OBJ file for this. Mm -hmm. So let's try that. Didn't OBJ. you already have that in there? In the when you were looking to in, in. let me grab yeah. the link for this one. And that it might be that too. So now we're gonna grab this. And we're going to change our link to the actual OBJ file. Mm 
Get rid of this, put that in. And our ID is still the same just because the ID name doesn't matter. So now Santa and a sleigh are up here. Ah, there it is. That's that is up there that you just see in the very Yeah. <laughs> well, that's appropriate. He's flying, sure. Right. Yeah. So let's pull this down a little bit. And okay, so we're shifting them. Oh, we're going to cross our crush our mushroom. <laughs> That would look kind of cool in VR just to have Santa just floating out there mm -hmm. too. Then you have like hidden Surprise, Santa. Surprise, yeah. Search for the Santa. Let's, um, let's try that. Whoa. Oh, yeah, you can see that it's the edge of the. He's See, all wonky, yeah. This would also look, because he's also rotated. Oh, yeah. Okay, so there's the reindeer. Yeah. Yep. Needs so, to be rotated. So, yeah, some tweaking needs to be done. Yeah. And, and it's I, huge. I also paused my tweaking because I looked at a clock. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. It's getting close to the end of the hour, mm -hmm. yeah. And... I mean, we also might have a Maverick Santa that just likes to fly on the edge. <laughs> Taking a hard turn. Right? Oh, and also, Rudolph is about to run into our box. That's just not recommended. Although, I mean, there's no real gravity. I was going to say, so gravity does not kind of have to apply. In, pop it in. Yeah, yeah, in VR. You might just kick the box. And you can also animate stuff. So mm -hmm. you can actually program it so that so that they could be like running or yeah. something. Nice. Well, that would be like a so or if moving you, like they were. You can make it so that it shifts position and you can ah, simulate okay. movement. Uh -huh. But you also have to add more animation to the actual object itself if you want the legs to move. Mm. So you would actually need to shift it between two different objects hmm. so that one has uh, the legs up and one legs down and legs up and legs it's like down. like doing this how you do like, like animation stop mode, yeah, yeah stop motion. Yeah. sure sure and so blender is a good program if you want to try to do the more complex um 3d modeling mm -hmm. and if you want to do more of the animation side of things um tinkercad is a good one if you want to just play around with making drag and drop designs mm-hmm so then if you go to this create new design here, you can actually make your own cylinder and cone. So you can make your own house in here without having to position it in. Mm. Uh, so create the object here and then put yeah. it into your virtual world, yeah. And this one is not, that's what I was gonna ask too, is there any way to do it? Because a lot of times people like the click and drag type yeah, thing is yeah. it can be so much easier. But I think it's good to know, because once you do that, it does have to do with numbers in there, the X, Y, Z and everything, Yeah. that once you have this built and you put it in it, if it's not exactly where you want, you're going to have to know, well, this is how I have to move it around yeah. once I'm in A-frame, yeah. And there's also, so as you, die, as you dig deeper into A-frame, you'll find there's also different ways to position stuff, and mm -hmm. there's different ways to animate things. Mm. Okay. So there's a lot to, to learn in there, yeah, yeah, that you can play with. Yeah. Now, um, one question uh, about this: How, because we are, you know, having to do libraries here, what? How could libraries use this? Um, 
like on their websites or in a program or something? Oh, you could actually take a 360 image of your library or a section mm -hmm. of the library, mm -hmm. and then it just takes that one line of code to pop it into a 3D world. So and okay. And then there's instructions in there for how to port it over to your website, which is it's that's not too bad because it's all HTML. So it's based. like doing here's a 3D tour of the library. Yeah. And yeah. Then, but then you could in, insert things into that that are not actually in the library. Like yeah, and that would be cool for like like a, a scavenger hunt type thing. You know, the, the library creates this and now yeah, go into this virtual world here and find where we've put things that maybe aren't yeah. actually in the library. Find the fake stuff or yeah. <laughs> or have the kids do it as you know, create the original world and have them as a program. We're yeah. gonna start you know because this is the thing you know, we're talking about a lot of libraries and schools are just talking about or just in the news, kids should need to learn code or could learn, should be learning something yeah. to do with some sort of different coding. And there's so many different programs and things that you can do. This might be something that some of the kids might latch onto. Yeah. So it could be a program of here's, we've created the world of the library. Now use some of these to put your own objects in and to play around with what should be there. And you can also build a virtual Alice in Wonderland. Oh wow, which is kind of fun. Oh, it's sure, based things on any books they're reading. Yeah. Absolutely, you know? yeah. And like Tinkercad opens the door to about a million and one different things, because mm -hmm. like, just because you can't use it commercially, you can use it for education. Oh yeah, which That's is exactly awesome. what it's for. Yeah, it's perfect. And since so many libraries and school libraries have been working on web development stuff and mm -hmm. teaching all the classes about that, mm -hmm. this is an awesome lead-in because it uses all those same basics. Yeah. So if you know the basics of HTML and how websites work, you know how this works. This is the same thing, yeah. It was all very very familiar to yeah. me who yeah. I'm updating websites every other day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's not something that's too too scary, but it depends on where you're at in it. But as you can see, everything there, right? I like to this and like when I'm doing websites, do the code next to what it's doing yeah. on the screen at the same time, yeah. so you can you can make that connection with oh this made that happen, and now I've got to move yeah. this. I do it yeah. that way all the time. Yeah. Because I have that I, I don't always remember or I can't always visualize when I put this here. What's it going to actually do? You're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then it's kind of, it's just getting familiar with navigating that virtual world. Mm -hmm. And then, so if you have the actual headset on, if you want to add animations, you also have to add a cursor. And the mm -hmm. cursor will kind of show more or less, it'll direct the computer as to where you're looking. Mm -hmm. So in a real headset, it'll track eye gaze based on like the little sensor parameters that yep. say that tell it which direction you're turning what you're doing moving your head yeah but when you're navigating this web world there's a little you have to position a cursor you're just using the mouse yep. to move it around yeah so when you add a cursor into the world it'll show up as just a little circle and mm -hmm. it'll show up floating some random place in there so then you have to position the default position of that cursor and then you have to click and move the world until the cursor is hovering over this ball. And then you can do kind of, if you know JavaScript, it'll be kind of like the on click. So it'll say when you click this, it'll move over here. Or when you click this, it'll turn blue. Or when mm -hmm. you click this, it'll turn into a square. And, but the clicking naturally intuitively you just want to take your mouse and click <laughs> it's what your yeah, yeah, habit you know? is yeah and that's honestly that's what I did the first time I did it too I was like <laughs> oh on click click no nope. and click and cl no it's click not, you know it's not doing it and but it's that cursor so you have to add the cursor and then shift it so the cursor is looking at what you want it to look at and then that triggers it hmm. Which is cool. not exactly intuitive for that one. Yeah, but it's designed for a headset, and it's, right, you're thinking about it. Yeah, think about it in a different way. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, and this is also glitch is also designed to work with um cardboard, like Google Cardboard. Oh right, sure. And you can also Easy. port it into other. So you don't things. have to go out and buy all the huge expensive VR equipment. Yeah. That's what those yeah. things like that are great for getting started. Yeah. Yeah. Or just keep it on the web. Because that's it's still, true too. Yeah. Yeah. 
I've seen these coming out lots more where you can, you know, virtual tours of places or oh, yeah. interact with this yeah. here this way. Yeah. Oh, be the part of beginnings of, you know, getting into video game design. That's oh, yeah. the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and Udemy and Udacity, they have, um, they basically have a series of courses that will show you how to build virtual worlds both in A-frame or in Unity. Hmm. So Unity is what they use for a lot of the game development stuff, both mm -hmm. 2D and 3D. And Unity is, it has a touch more of that drag and drop feel to mm -hmm. it, but it also has a lot of the, you can use Unity with Vuforia and that will be kind of like the easier entry point into it. And then you can also launch into C Sharp, which is another way to have more control over the animations. And Unity is also more what they use in the workforce too. So if there are high school students or there are adults that wanna to try to learn this kind of stuff for the workforce, that might be a good kind of lead into it. Mm -hmm. So A-Frame will get them used to how the 3D world works and build off of skills that are pre-existing, and then you shift over into Unity. Everything builds on something else, yeah. They're Pretty not, much. yeah. Nice. All right. But I'm way over my time. Yeah, we're all a little <laughs> bit over, that's okay. Anything yeah. else you need to? You showed everything we talked about you're gonna show today that I can see from the description. <laughs> and more or less, you mainly just want to sift through here. Mm -hmm. Start with the basic scene, and then this will show you kind of a walkthrough of how to the adjust tutorial. and tweak everything. Yeah. And Glitch itself also has a series of tutorials designed for A-Frame. And that'll oh, cool. give you five step-by-step -step tutorials for how to tweak and adjust and learn how to animate and learn how to add textures. Mm -hmm. So you can turn your cube into a Mario brick. And that's kind you of can a do all sorts one. Of yeah. yeah. And so it's just kind of a, well, there's only so much we could cover in one little overview sure. session. But it gets you started. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. Get you started yeah. thinking about it, think, thinking about how this could be used in your library either for your own library purposes or for your programs. Yeah. Yeah. And also building a mini library game is just good times. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. Well, thank you very much, Amanda. This is, when I saw the description of this one, I was like, okay, build a virtual world. That's, yeah. I, I, I want to know all about that because I don't have a clue. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So um, let's go to our uh, Encompass Live. Type Encompass yeah. Live since you got the keyboard there. And just hit enter. There we go. So um, if you use whatever uh, your search engine of choice is, Encompass Live so far is the only thing called that on the internet. Nobody else can use our name. <laughs> um, as this is our website on the commissions page. So today's show, as I said, has been recorded. These are our upcoming shows, but right underneath here is the link to our archives. And this is just the most recent one at the top of the page. So this is the show from last week where we have um, a link to the recording. And this one did have a presentation. Uh, this week's show will have a link to the recording. And then within the description, there are links to A-Frame, Glitch, um, but as you have the, the coolers for yep. the colors are all in there for you to access. So this is where that will be. Uh, by the end of the day today, I should have this recording up as long as YouTube and GoToWebinar cooperate with me. Uh, mm -hmm. And I will email everyone who logged in today or registered for today's show. We also push out things onto our Facebook page and Twitter and all the social media, our mailing lists. Uh, we do have a, um, oh, so the, while we're here, this is the archives. You can see we have a search feature here uh, where you can search our entire archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want something very current and up to date. That is because this is the full archives of Encompass Live. We started the show in January 2009, so we're 10 years more Sweet. in, <laughs> and all of our archives are here. All of our recordings are here. So um, do pay attention when you are doing a search or looking for anything here. Everything's got a date when it was originally broadcast. So some things may be old, outdated. Websites might um, be, links might be broken. Some services and products might have changed or not even exist anymore. 
over 10 years time yeah. so um, but we are librarians we archive things for historical purposes so it will always be there as long as we can but um, if you are searching here for a particular topic like I said search the whole thing or if you want to just have up-to-date info uh, change to the most recent 12 months before you run your search yeah. and you'll get those uh, we do have a Facebook page for Encompass Live, uh, so if you do like to use Facebook, keep an eye on us over there. We send updates. Uh, here's a reminder to log in to today's show when our recordings are available. No, I don't want to log in right now. Thank you. Um, when our have been our recordings have been posted, we put them on here. Here's a recording of last week's announcing. So um, if you do like to use Facebook two, three times a week. Not a huge, not a lot coming from us in there, but do give us a like over there. And okay, so that will be for today's show. Next week's show is on the summer reading program. And I will, you will notice here, we have another reminder about this one. Once again, next week, there is a holiday on Wednesday. It is New Year's Day, another state holiday for here, us here. So we did bump it next week's to Tuesday. I don't think there'll be any change for next week. We don't usually get any extra days off for that coming, filtering down to us. So ideally, next Tuesday, December 31st, same time, 10 a.m., uh, Sally Snyder, our coordinator of Children's and Young Adult Library Services, will be talking about books um, for the upcoming summer reading program for next year, which is Imagine Your Story, Myths and Fairy Tales and Things oh, is I the like topic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you see there's a little, you know, kids reading this little frog over there. You frog can build prints. a virtual yes. world for myths and fairy tales. Oh, absolutely. Use awesome. this week's show with next week's, mm -hmm. and you'll have an awesome summer reading program next year. <laughs> oh, I should have done it after. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> So um, do sign up for that one and any of our other shows we have scheduled here. We still have January and February filling up. Um, we'll see what you have for uh, a topic for January. Keep your eyes open if you're into tech things, pretty sweet tech. We have them on the calendar. And as uh, Amanda comes up with her specific topics, then things get updated on there for those sweet. shows. Mm -hmm. So please do sign up and join us for any of our upcoming shows. Um, and if you have any questions about today's show and what, um, anything, reach out to Amanda or contact info on our website. She can chat with you about things if you need some more tips and tricks while you're trying to use A-Frame or any of these things. Sweet. Yeah. All right, other than that, thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you another time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye.